Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is a specially scheduled meeting of the Sunderland Select Board of Awesome. Until we get our name, that's what we're going to be called. We have two items tonight, if we can call it the order at uh, 6.37. Uh, we're a little bit late because, frankly, we're just a little bit late we're going over some of our details down and now we're live. So we have two things to do tonight. One is uh, we have a town administrator uh, candidate interview. The candidates applied for both the interim as well as the full-time position. That's uh, Angeline Lopez Ellison. Lopes or Lopez? Lopes. Lopes, Lopes Ellison. Um, so right. conduct that interview uh, again so people who are watching understand the process. We have a total of five candidates, six forwarded to us from the personnel committee, five interviews, uh, two of which after tonight with two of which will be complete one next monday two next tuesday and then uh we'll uh, compare our notes uh, we've got our questions prepared we'll look at those notes and then conduct seconds and hopefully uh move toward contract negotiations because again town minister is a contracted position uh probably early december mid-december uh, with our goal still hopefully uh, being the first of the year and that was our goal at the outset and that's why we decided to take this process um, uh, for you uh, you want angie miss ellison angie's fine angie's great okay for you for you angie we've got 164 canned questions well <laughs> thought out <laughs> Can I come closer? please yeah uh, we, we um we don't have a particular time frame inside. Uh, we don't have a second candidate tonight. Uh, and there'll be time to ask the board questions after that. Uh, any uh, deeper dives into questions or follow-ups, uh, we'll just go right through the, through the, uh, through the board and uh, we'll take it from there. So, any questions of the board? None? No, I know. Kind of like last night, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of like last time. Okay, uh, again, we've got our, our questions lined up and thanks for coming it's it's last night's candidate came and there was snow on the car so yeah. wow. so it was like okay good for you wow. today was just cold yeah yeah, right? yeah it's frigid out it's, there it's <laughs> tough out there um start with questions or do you want to do a brief introduction we have your resume um however you want to proceed great. i will follow you lead great let's do it let's start with questioning uh, David, Angie, go ahead. Angie, yes. Please tell us why you're why you'd be interested in this position. Well, um, in regards to the position itself, is um, my undergraduate, as you know from my resume, my undergrad and graduate work is in political science and American studies. So this sort of comes full circle in regards to local government, government, and moving forward in that aspect. Um, uh, my parents spent a lot of money to have me have a career that I didn't use until, you know, <laughs> later in life. Um, but ultimately, the work that I love, um, specifically to Sunderland, I think is in regards to sort of d in doing the research and finding a community. I know we talked briefly, but about the longevity, because every time I looked at the minutes and um, the agenda, it listed the three of you as select uh, board members, so my wanting to find a community that's consistent, stable, and has sort of a, a direction and guidance, um, because the more st stable the board of selectmen is, the more stable the community and how they move the town forward. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I say it as I'm trying to sell you, um, you know, my candidacy, Town administrators come and go, but if the board of selectmen keep coming and going, there's no continuity or direction or guidance. And so that's one of the reasons why um, I was more attracted to Sunderland as well, hmm. um, you know, along with some of the other um, projects in, in, you know, you're down the street from Amherst and um, having had uh, my experience in most of my management um, has been in higher education. Um, and I think I bring a unique perspective to municipal government in that 
I see things a little bit out of the box. You know, you have people that have sort of come through um, municipal, local government, and they see it just based on the way the law is written or how the program is run. Um, having gone through a higher education and sort of being dean of students, it gives me a little different perspective in problem solving, troubleshooting, and looking at it more collaboratively. And I think I bring that to the table. Um, and for Sunderland, as I was mentioning, relative to you know UMass, for example, one of the things that I do do, um, you guys have a volunteer fire, um, you know, utilizing the students there uh, to, to, to you know whether in the criminal justice program or one of their programs, get them some level of internship. You, they get the experience they need, the town, and we get something out. Um, as a port, as you know, it could be a project, it could be anything, and utilizing that aspect of it. So it's multifaceted, um, but ultimately it's wanting the position and, and the right fit in a community. Thank you, Angie. Oh, Hi, David. Um, <clears throat> what would you say your three main professional goals are for the next five to ten years? Um, well, for the next five years, it's definitely to find a community um, that I want to develop um, in work. I know I was going to yeah, my, my hands, hands are a little cold here. <laughs> it's so. cold. Um, I, and um, when I had had my last position, I, I sort of went to it and said, you know, this is where I want to end up. I, I, I want to find a community that is consistent, steady, and also that, you know, is a good fit in regards to um, moving forward and, and sort of, I feel like I'm professionally developing, I'm just not being stagnant. Um, I, you know, obviously I'm interviewing here because I believe that you, you know, Sunderland provides that aspect for it. Um, my children are still in high school, so I'm not going anywhere until, the, you know, at least the, the youngest one uh, is done. So, you know, that takes us to about five years and thereafter. I think in regards to if Sunderland is where I am and successful is sort of looking at and working collectively with you guys and seeing, you know, can I get you to the next stage? Or, you know, where do we go from there and how do we move forward to the next, you know, where the, the board wants to go and move strategically? Good. All right. Thank you. So, Angie, what um, strategies do you use uh, in anticipation of problems? If you can give an example, that would be great. Um, quote, the problem arises, haven't anticipated, how are you likely to handle it? So, uh, like, anticipation and then response. Something comes up. Um, well, <laughs> You always anticipate something going wrong. Uh, <laughs> Most days, actually. A friend of mine once asked why I wanted to be in municipal government. I said, it's the most inconsistent, consistent thing that I do. Because every single day, I go in, I have my agenda, I have my meeting, I have my schedule, inevitably, I might do one thing on that, um, and it, some, it takes me someplace else. Um, it, in the, my, I see sort of my role as town administrators to sort of gather the facts and move the, the town and the residents onto a certain direction with the guidance of the board. But ultimately, whatever I do, whatever gets done, there'll always be opposition. So it's trying to figure out what it is that the opposition is and what they want. You know, you're not gonna please, you know, the saying, you're not gonna please everybody. But working and being in the town administrator role, I need to understand what is it that they're not liking? Because if I can understand that, then I'm assured that when you guys present things at town meeting, those that don't like it felt like they've been heard and or considered in moving the, the vote forward. Um, because ultimately, you know, the bottom line is getting town vote and also some of the board of selectmen vote. We're pretty uh, needle stuck in the groove sometimes about reminding the public that they're actually the legislative body. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. not our vote. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> it's, it's the it's moderator's the meeting. We give it to the moderator. You guys vote on it. Oh, exactly. We want things to pass, yeah, but yeah. It's, it's not our meeting. So. Yeah. Great, thanks very much. Angie, 
What are the two most difficult problems you have encountered in your previous positions, and how did you solve them? Hmm. The two most difficult problems. Um, I think one of the biggest problems that I faced when I first started um, is trying to understand the political culture. Um, I came, again, from higher education, so when there's a problem, there's no, I'm going to sabotage it because I don't agree with you. It's sort of, let's all sit down, let's all figure out what the problem is, let's, you know, you don't like this, all right, if we did this, would that work? And then once we all agree, you leave the room and everybody supports that idea and we move forward with that idea. Municipal government doesn't always work that way, particularly in different towns, and that was one of the struggles I had early on because I felt like, well, you know, the team agreed with this, with, and I couldn't bring myself to, I don't want to say accepting because it, it sort of negates my responsibility in it, but sort of seeing that no matter what I think is right or the proper way of doing things, there'll always be opposition on a political level. And my job is to be apolitical, and I couldn't balance, um, you know, because there are times you, you want to say certain things and you just can't. It's interesting that you say that. Sometimes one of our, one of our things that we hear from the town is like, that you guys, a lot of times you take votes and it's 3-0. Um, and I would say it's because, and the vote may be 3-0, but people don't listen how we got to the 3-0 vote. Mm -hmm. and, and I think we try to be respectful of one another. Um, and sometimes we may go, we may go in, Dave and I may be go, go in 108 opposite position, but then through our, our okay. conversations, uh, uh. we somehow either one side or the other may prevail and or the three of us come, we all come off from our positions to find something in, in the middle. or it, and it doesn't have to be in the middle, that's a good point, it doesn't have to be the middle, it may be someplace on that spectrum. Okay. And sometimes we've gone into things where we have, maybe we've all felt one way and we ended up 180 offices. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and often, oftentimes the room is busy with those discussions. The room is full and we're hearing from people and you go, hmm, hadn't quite thought of it that, yeah. probably that way. So I understand what you said, but for us at least, we've, we've always, we, we've tried to always listen, um, to lead, but, but the leading has been a lot of times our our residents are telling us where to go, and we're listening to that. So, um, and, and sometimes that makes that makes the leadership a lot easier instead of trying to buck the, the system all the time. Thank you for your answer. Um, describe how you'd keep citizens well informed about governmental matters, and conversely, how would you make sure citizens' views and concerns are properly addressed? Um, and on the first one, it can be whatever communication methods, you know, like what you found to work in the past or whatever. Yeah. Well, for a community, <clears throat> and, and sort of taking it back to when I was in Blandford, um, I, I really like a smaller community because of the hands-on approach. I have a philosophy of just an open-door policy. Uh, if my door's open, anybody can walk in and we can talk and, and, or send, you know, email. Um, I believe in sort of government being transparent and open. Um, and this may also tie into your former question about, you know, another problem that I didn't face is that I'm very open and honest in whether you're on the same side of an argument as I am, I'll share the same information. My job is to give you the information, give you the information, and give you the information. Um, and sort of not ha and, and I guess that's how I, I function um, in, in sort of my one of the communities I was in previously that information was used then in, in sort of in a negative way in, in 
and I don't see that as my role. Like, I'll give you the information. I, I'm not determining the spectrum of where you sit in that information space. Um, I truly believe in utilizing the web page, um, you know, trying to get as much of the anything that anyone would ask for that would be a public record should be on the web page or accessible. Um, one of the things that I had said and sort of as a philosophy relative to uh, communities, like some communities function as, you know, if you want some information, do a public records request. I'm of the belief if they do a public records request, that shows to the state that you're not fulfilling your obligation to an open meeting and open okay. government, yeah. right? So if you give it to, you should strive not to have a public record request as, as opposed to using that as a deterrent to providing information. Um, so I would definitely utilize the, the web page um, in, in making everything easy and end user friendly. Um, I would say in, in regards to sort of Facebook, Instagram, and some of the social media, I hesitate because of the public records laws because any comment that is made on there cannot be deleted in however offensive it is and you cannot create a page that doesn't allow and you know I, I try to do that where you just disseminate information without comments and you can't create a, a page in that nature so the, I, I hesitate with that piece of it because you cannot delete the comments um, not because you know of resisting anybody if anybody said any you know and I've seen people say things that were borderline racist homophobic uh, yeah. you know yeah there's yeah. no shortage of that yeah. kind of stuff yeah. like that, you yeah. know and you, <clears throat> then you're sort of stuck and you have to archive it um, th th this this places now that I'll archive your social media page and stuff like that but it'll, it'll cost money because the state says you have to archive it yes it does so, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, social media, open door policies, um, transparency, you know, town meetings, making myself available. Um, I love, love going to events, um, you know, in a community that's open and receptive. In Blanford, I used to, you know, the, I worked part-time there because the position was part-time. And I drove back because they the biggest thing they had was their Halloween. Um, it's not like the trunk or treaters, you know, oh, yeah. uh, in the behind town hall and stuff. And I came back. I was dressed up. I had a bag, and everybody was so surprised to see me. But you know, I need to do that to be part of the community. And one of the board of selectmen members was like, "I didn't expect you to be here. Go home." I'm like, "No, this is fun, you know." So it was it was good. You check off the box for crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Have to be crazy to be a town administrator. Yeah. <laughs> check. Check, yeah. <laughs> so uh, if, I, if I could, uh, you mentioned, Angie, about the, the best part about um, municipal government is always uh, inconsistently consistent. Uh, can you give an example of creative problem solving you've used in that inconsistently consistent environment? <laughs> Um, oh my goodness. I, I don't know if it was creative, but it definitely helped to resolve a lot of issues. Um, in the previous community, there was a mass exodus of staff. Um, and because uh, literally the, the statutory positions of accountant treasurer um, were not filled, um, Division of Local <coughs> Services um, sort of stepped in to meet me, one, because I was new, um, and two, to sort of make sure that, you know, things were falling into place. Um, when they came out after I, well, my initial meeting, because I was new there, the second meeting they came out, um, they were surprised because we had a meeting about the, the town's financial, and literally I had the entire staff with, um, well, contracted um, accountant and a contracted treasurer to be able to sustain us because we couldn't get anybody to fill in. Um, when they saw who it was, literally you could see um, MJ's face. She, you know, she was initially she was very 
uh, process oriented and by the time she walked into the meeting and saw the caliber of expertise that I had brought in, you could see her relax and sort of like, oh, just get me a plan, sure, no problem, just get me a plan. So um, I, I think sort of, I guess creativity would be sort of, I typically will solve the problem as opposed to trying to figure out ways of, of steps to solve it. Um, you know, it, it, I remember when I was a Board of Selectmen member in my town, they had to cancel or because of the ice storm, um, they can well, they canceled Halloween. And I didn't think they we, needed. No, 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 <laughs> no, no. We did. We didn't cancel Halloween. We we, we we postponed <laughs> trick or treating. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we did, yeah, we've yeah. been there. We did that. Yeah. We've been so, there. Oh, just recently. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah we've been there. Triple E. Yeah. yeah we, so we just postponed trick or treating. We don't have that yeah. kind of authority to Ooh. cancel. Cancel Halloween. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So, but what, at my town, they had because of the weather. Um, and as I was a board of selectmen, instead of making it an issue um, relative to, well, what can be done? It's not fair to the stu you know, kids, blah, blah, blah. I literally went, talked to all of the people that typically organize it and asked them if they could do it. Um, they couldn't do it. I, lit I created a trunk or treating program that all of the cars, we bought candy, some other residents that couldn't do trick-or-treating in their neighborhood because it was canceled. The following weekend, did um, they donated candy and the whole, pro the whole thing took place. My community is about 9,500 people and they showed up and, you know, nobody had to do anything because I took care of it. Um, and it, it had, well, went off without a hitch. Um, you know, there was another time as well that I had, um, before I, and actually the, this was the impetus for me to run for the Board of Selectmen. Um, our mailboxes were literally in, in our street, because I live on a main street, all on one side of the road, like clumped together on a busy road. For two years, I saw this little old woman walk across the street and, and like, you know, almost like the game Frogger, yeah. you yeah, know, who's got like, get to the main yeah, line. she could, and f I was so frustrated. And then I also just recently had younger children. And so I was like, how am I going to lug my kids across the street to get, because, you know, when you're a new mom, you never leave your kids for two minutes oh, okay. to go get the mail, you know? Yeah. Um, so I saw that as a problem. I could have easily went and complained to the town, done all of this, and I literally called the post office and said, why are the mailboxes here? They explained it to me. I got in touch with the postmaster, explained the situation. They, they said they couldn't do it. I did a study. I sat out there, videotaped her crossing the street, and I brought it to the postmaster, and I said, I just want you to know I'm putting you on notice at this point because this is what we deal with. We each now have mailboxes respectfully in front of our homes, oh, um, route, yeah. as opposed to all of it cluttered on one side. Because mm -hmm. it was just a ma it was a convenience. Right. They right. only wanted to go on oh, one side right. of the road, yeah. and it wasn't like it was the entire street. It was literally probably a two block mm -hmm. section. Mm -hmm. Before it was on both sides, and after it was so that happened, and I. You know, I, I just do it. it. You know, we got a problem, we got to fix it, we got to solve it. The ones that I think I typically don't do that to are the ones that I feel need a different perspective. You know, quick solutions. Uh, although some people may, they said they were trying to do it for years, but that seemed like a quick solution. Sure. You know, the trunk or treater seemed like a quick. It didn't need a committee. <laughs> you know, it didn't need a whole bunch. So those I. I I'm well versed and skilled enough, and they maybe have been from my higher education background in trying to probe. You know, you have students that are in crisis, you know, right. that are suicidal. You need to make quick snap decisions that'll that you need to solve issues. So, Perfect. Uh, Thanks so much. That sort of addressed the out oh, of the box question. No, yeah, no. <laughs> consistency and inconsistencies you described earlier, and then the example of creative problem solving. It was well done. Thank you. Andy, please describe how your previous, previous work experiences have prepared you for this position and try to be, please be specific. Well, the, the biggest 
biggest aspect for me was that I've, in my higher education, um, was management, working in, in sort of, I, I alluded to collaboration, working collectively with people from different backgrounds, with different perspectives and different wants and needs. Um, and, and just all coming together to, whether for intellectual stimulation and or to actually resolve a problem, you, you figure that out. Um, in municipal government is that, you know, sometimes there are people that need to go through an intellectual understanding of an issue and they need to talk it out, they need to hear it out, they need to process it, they need to see the pros and cons before they can make a decision while there's others that deal with issues on an emotional level. You know, how is it affecting me? Um, and so being able to balance that piece of it. Um, my degrees gave me a more structural understanding of government. You know, sometimes I, I, I jokingly say, every time something happens in government, I want to call up one of my faculty members and say, it's not a theory. It does happen this way, you know? It really does. Um, and so I think that adds to sort of my experience and expertise in being able to logistically maneuver local government. Thank you. Um, I'll, I'll pick this next question because it kind of follows along because we, we're a little unique compared to some other towns because we're actually a f fairly diverse town because of our population. We've got the highest per capita number of apartments in the state. And a lot of that is either students, faculty, people coming in out of UMass, I mean, which is right down the road. So, um, so describe your experience in working with citizens from various cultural backgrounds. What approaches have you used to ensure adequate attention is given to the varying needs of those groups? Because especially here, you're going to, I mean, we've got people from all over the globe here. So in addition to what you think of as a typical you know, Western Mass farm town. Yeah, too, yeah, so. yeah. Um, Sort of tying in my previous answer to the mm. question, you know, in higher education, you you have people from all walks of life, um, you know, all walks and parts of the world, um, and you need to come together and, and bring in and take into consideration some of the cultural norms, um, some of the. I don't want to say standard of operation, for mm -hmm. a lack of a better, you know, this is yeah. how we, because you'll always have those, this is how we do it here. Yeah, exactly. You know, right. th this is how it's always been. And then you always have th those that will say, well, you know, here we are, though, and this is what we need to do to move us forward. Right. Um, so uh, my background leads to be able to work in, in those realms and in, in, in ideologies. Um, I don't take anything for granted, but at the same time, I don't make any assumptions, you know. So um, it, it's, you know, we need to come together and I'm talking about the collaboration that I talked about, you know, if it's a big issue, if it's a quick fix, you know, I, I can make that decision and, and you know, all right, right, and move forward. But bigger decisions, I think, just having people sit down. And that's one of the things, too, I found in particular municipal government. People want to, in sort of, which also takes into my aspect of customer service, you know, my approach to that is when people come in, they want to be able to be heard. You may not be able to fix or solve their problem, you know. The, the snow plow just knocked my mailbox over for the 50th time. That didn't you, happen. Yeah. <laughs> happen. You know. Yeah. At, I you didn't know, get on the radio. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, in, in, the, the, for them, it's so frustrating because here they are having to come back. And my role is just to sit and listen and let them vent, you know. And, and I might not be able to provide them a solution, but I definitely can let them vent and feel like they're being heard and offer to get back to them and get you an answer that will or will not help the situation, but I'll definitely look into it. Right. Thanks. So having been on both sides of the table um, in your experience, you know, grants and other funding sources are important with respect to 
towns, infrastructure, etc. Especially with the state now, everything's grants. Everything's grants, <laughs> right. uh-huh. No. Yeah. I, I, I wanna, They're not giving you the if, money. You've got to work for it. If I, had a, if I had a time machine, I'd go back to that meeting where they said, how about grants and we distribute that way? Yeah. Like, no. no. But anyway, yeah. I don't have that time machine. But that said, uh, grants on the outside funding sources are important to a town's vision, greatly enhance our opportunities. Mm -hmm. And uh, can you discuss your experience with either procuring and or administering grants or other outside funding sources on your your municipal side? Um, On the municipal side, it's a little, I don't want to say tricky, because um, in Blanford, Uh, They were just, because they were so small, I was literally one of a few, and I was even part-time. Got it. Um, So we we were working on the green community designation, um, planning, the planning board was working, and I had just come into town when they started the process, so I worked closely with them in trying to get it. But we also, and one of the things that I made sure that, because... I was not an expert in what would be classified as green community. Uh, we pulled in the um, local, the regional planning board, uh, planning committee. Um, I can't even remember what it was. Was it the Pioneer Valley? Pi- yeah, P- yeah, yeah, Pioneer Valley, Pioneer Valley Plan- Planning yeah. Commission. Yeah. yeah. So we utilized them to help with it, and you know, and I did the same thing too because when I was in Uxbridge, but they are they were further along in the process, and I used them to coordinate a lot of the state requirements, write the formulas, and because, you know, they, they do it in their sleep. Um, so utilizing that piece of it. Um, other grant opportunity, you know, the community compact, which now at this point, every single town and city, and in, in, yeah. um, I think yeah. the last time Lieutenant Governor spoke about it, I think there was like one town that was just waiting to be approved. Um, so all of the, so those pieces of it. And I would utilize more, um, especially for a community this size, more of the community compact grant opportunities because you can pro- solve a lot of the problems um, through their funding and see if it makes sense to continue because, that makes sense. Y- you know, it, 99% of the time you're trying to do the feasibility study, <laughs> go through the compact. You know, and and call it a regional approach, <laughs> and yeah. you know, and, and get it get it resolved in that aspect. Um, and we were also working, and I this was more as a team approach, um, which you know, DPW, fire, police, and a few other departments. Um, I had one person from each department, and we worked on the MVP grant. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is a municipal vulnerability yep. plan. Um, We're working on that right now, as a matter of fact. Are you? So, yeah. yeah. Uh, do, do you, you guys use Frog? Yep. For, the for frog, frog, yeah. Frog, yeah. Um, to, yeah, so yes. it's, you know, our Uxbridge is, uh, it was the, the Worcester, um, is the regional planning committee, so we use them to help write and, and formulate it, but ultimately the hours that we, we worked on, um, I, Although Uxbridge didn't qualify me for, but I also stayed con- connected with the small town um, STEM, STEM mm-hmm. small yep. town administrators. Administrators group. Yep. Yeah, and um, they had done a workshop, and if I knew, I would have brought you a whole list of grant opportunities for small towns that they the workshop had discussed the annual meeting, and they talked about all of these grant opportunities through various different. Um, so th- this this windows and these opportunities and these different venues. Again, I go back to what is it that you want me to pursue? Because me doing it is e- you know it, I don't want to say it's the easy part, but figuring that piece of it is the lesser of the evils, in, but finding out what you want to go forward and how we can tie it into the grant opportunities is key. So a couple yeah. times a year we end up with a big checklist in front of us right. where those priorities are, one through fives, and we work with the town administrator and invariably other partners, COG as well, move those, move those up, the lo- up the line. Yep. Yeah, we're a green community and we're doing the MVP and yep. community compact, complete streets, complete so we try streets. to take advantage of yeah, exactly. As much of that as we can, yeah. and f- for the the obvious reasons. But we, um, but also too, we've gotten a lot of grants that have actually helped to um, end up saving the money, and you know, using grants for like LED street lighting, things like yeah. that, yeah. to actually you know become more efficient. And 
various aspects of the operation of the town. So there's a lot of money that gets saved that people don't even realize because we utilize a grant to save it. So now we're not expending those costs. And it's kind of, it kind of the saving sort of disappears up front in a way, mm -hmm. you know. You know, it's not as, as a direct in your face kind of thing as like lowering a tax rate or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But in the end, it helps to keep the tax rate from going up more because we're saving money, so. Okay. Thank you. Angie, consider the following situation. And this would never happen with us. But, <laughs> but may occur from time to time. Your elected board at a public meeting appears anxious and ready to vote on an important policy decision that you firmly believe would be detrimental to the town. The issue had not been discussed previously and therefore is a new issue. What would you do and how would you do it? Hmm. Well, I, I'll take you a few steps back first. If I'm the successful candidate, we, there would be no issue for you to vote on without us having had you having all of the information that you need. Like a new item would never show up on your plate where you would vote on or we would establish a relationship that if a resident came in and said, I need you to vote on blah, 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 you know, we figure out a way to let's get all of the information so you guys can make educated decisions on anything that needs a vote. Um, and if I'm not providing you that information, then that's a conversation that we need to have that you need to say to, you know, I, we, I need these things to be able to do that. So that's first and foremost. But should that not happen, um, one of the things that I would definitely do in regards to, and I, I, in some of the previous committee, I would meet with the chair on a regular basis um, and sort of, because you know we can't meet two <laughs> more than two right. collectively, um, but you know individually be able to have that conversations with you on an individual basis, um, and let you know what some of the information that I have and why I believe this is going to be detrimental. Um, and in all honesty, if those safeguards don't work and you take the vote, ultimately I have to live with it because you are the resident, you are the select board, you were the ones elected to make those decisions for the community and I can only deal with the ramifications of that at that point if you so choose to move forward with that decision, having had and done what I could do to provide the information and educate you on the topic. Thank you, Angie. Um, what, what do you think of your biggest work-related accomplishments, and um, what are you most proud of, and why? And how are you able to attain those? Can you? I didn't hear. Yeah. What, what would you consider to be your biggest work-related? And, and let's we can put that. You can, it can be a municipal or education, whichever. Um, and then, um, why would you think you were able to ob ob obtain those goals? Huh. Well, the biggest maybe something one, you're the most proud of, or yeah, you know. Yeah. I, I think maybe the biggest one might be in, in um, when I was in higher education. Uh, I, I sort of I pat myself in the back because I think it's what started UMass Boston into a residential program. They they were really a. Um, just a Almost like school. a commuter school. I mean, they're they're a university, but they were functioning as a commuter school. You know, and we had folks and kids coming from different places going to school there. And the nursing program was in constant conversation with me uh, because they were losing a lot of high quality students because there was no housing. Yeah. Um, and one of the things that I ended up doing and working with um, the housing coordinator um, was see this, there was a housing unit um, down sort of like in the backside and down the street and we tried to see if we could rent a few of those because they were suffering from vacancies. Mm. And the ones closer to the schools, as they were getting empty, we would hold, hold that off from being re-rented and creating sort of a housing for the, for the residents. Um, since then, um, my understanding is that they actually have housing in campus and they have a whole housing system because what I had come from 
um, had been a residential program. All of my higher education experiences have had residence halls. And so moving in that direction. And so I think that was my biggest accomplishment because they didn't understand the concept, but once it was established, they embraced it enough to move it forward. And it has excelled beyond me. So I, I can sort of say yeah, I was the impetus. There you go. Oh, okay. I, you know, I, I claim. Please, so. please, please, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, thanks. I'll be the yin to his yang. Yeah. How about the biggest failure? Right, everybody crashes at some point. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. And what 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 was learned from it, and and you know, how would they go about? How would you go about preventing them from recurring? Um, my biggest failure. It sort of alludes to one of the questions I had said before. Was understanding the political environment. Um. I learned a lot from my previous employment um, in, in regards to how to balance the culture from what is necessarily right mm -hmm. um, and being able to just sort of accept that there are times that no matter what you do, it doesn't matter. Um, and, and that was the hardest reality that I had ever had to con contemplate. Did you end up, um, a follow-up question, out of, out of that experience, end up, the term, um, po you know, politically savvy. Some people are just inherently political. Tom's, Tom's really good at gauging people. I, I'm, I'm, like a, I'm like this. I, I, it is what it is. Yeah, yeah. Right? You are who you are, and that's <laughs> yeah, the way yeah, yeah, it yeah. is. And um, so is there, is there a, an inherent lesson that comes out of that? And, and was there anything really learned out of that, gauging political culture? I struggle with it myself. That's why I ask the question. That's why I fumble with the words, because frankly, I, I oftentimes don't get it. Yeah. Um, what I got out of that She's is... She's laughing because she knows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just say it. Yeah, yeah. I'm not just saying. That's just what it is. <laughs> Yeah. What I learned out of that experience was pretty much that, and I think I just said, you know, it, it, it may not necessarily be the right thing. I just have to accept that some people will just do what they do because they do what they do, um, you know, um, and I'm... I don't want to say that I'm black and white, in, 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 but I'm very transparent and open. And I have a hard time with people who sort of say one thing but do something else. Yeah, the games. And yeah, mm -hmm. you, you know, and I'm like, but where did that come from? Like, I, and so I've learned to accept the fact that no matter, you know, I, I have to be me, I have to, I, you know, I'll give everybody the same information and how you use that information, I can't own anymore because I think I spent a lot of time trying to figure out what did I do wrong. And I've, it, it got to a point that it's like, I just couldn't do right. <laughs> you know, there was nothing I could do. Um, and so that, that piece of it is... Focus on the practical. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah and move forward to what you can move forward. Mm -hmm. you know? Great, thanks. Angie, this is a, it's a, it's a question that's gonna allow you to sell yourself to us and to the town, <laughs> okay? But uh, although we, we, we reviewed your resume and, and, and you've talked about some of your qualifications, would you tell us a little bit more about your professional background and your interests? Oh God! Well, my interest is definitely in municipal government. You know, I ended up doing a master's in uh, master certificate for ma local government and management um, through the MMA in South Suffolk, like, yeah. um, and that was. I, I'm, I'm, I'm literally, it's going to sound like the cheesiest thing. I'm in love with municipal government and the functionality of it. Like, I love it. Like, every time something... Definitely cheesy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's, yeah. it's all good, yeah. though. Yeah, you know, and it's like every time something... I, I, and I'll, even at my worst, 
state in, 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 you know, where I could say I was at my bottom. I, the whole time I'd go home and I'm like, oh my God, that really happened, you know? I, and, and processing it and stuff like that. Um, so professionally, I, in, I, I love the, the, the work. Um, I, because I love the work, it doesn't feel like work. Um, there have been times that there have been other staff members and department heads, and, and one in particular I recall said, do you know you sent me an email at 2 o'clock in the morning? I was like, yeah. And she's like, it was 2 o'clock in the morning. I'm like, yeah. Like it didn't dawn on me what she was saying, and then finally it clicked, oh, you don't send emails at 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> you, you know, and whenever I think of it and things happen, it, it's just, it happens. I mean, I'm a night owl too, so, but that... Yeah. Um, didn't, but yeah, I don't, did I, I don't know if I answered your question. No, I, I just, I, I, I think it, it's, it's an interesting question, mm -hmm. um, because of listening to you describe some of your past experiences in government and for you still to be, have the passion for local government. Oh, yeah. I, 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 and that's why I kind of thought it was a, a, an interesting question for you, yeah, yeah. maybe more so than some others, just because of yeah. the things that you've been telling us. So you would was, think I would have said, I'm never going to do this again. Get me back to higher education yeah. Or, or, yeah. Yeah, but, but yes and no. <laughs> but but it, it, I, I was interested to, interest, interested to find out what drives you. Um, and you know what drives that love of municipal government? Because I mean, we have it. We ourselves have it. I mean, David, That's my David's been in local here. government for a long time. Scott's been a long time. Myself, and and I know, I know what's in me. Yeah, yeah. But I just like to hear what's in you, especially. And you know, when you said before, sometimes you just have to let it go. It is what it is, and some people do. And, and sometimes I know, I know that feeling because um, if you lose a vote, like we had an override question. Devastating. Um, and, and for us, we know, we know better than anybody what that override meant yeah. because we see the faces, we, see, we hear the, the, the potential things that can happen when you lose a vote. So for us, it's difficult. But for you, it's a, it, but it's not our livelihood. So, yeah. so tomorrow we could all quit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and ninety five percent of the people say, "Great, they're gone." Right. <laughs> um, but for you, it's your livelihood, and and to continue to put yourself, I, I just, you I, it, it's yeah. interesting to hear your comments. I you, guess. Yeah, yeah. You you have to love it to to do it. I, I mean, if you don't, I don't know why. And maybe this will help you better understand me and why I'm passionate. Mm. And that's why I was trying, that's what, that's what I think the question means so, a lot. Yeah. So when I was in fifth grade, I'll take you way back then, um, we were learning about, you know, civic, municipal, not municipal, just government, government structure and stuff like that. Um, and I found out that I couldn't run for president of the United States. I cried. I would not talk to anybody. My teacher came and asked, and, and, and I remember it vividly, and I think that was the changing point of me knowing that government was where I needed to be. I mean, initially I was going to go to law school. Then I worked for an attorney and said, never again. But <laughs> that's an aside. Yeah. Um, one foot on wait, wait, wait a second. One, Check. One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Com com common sense. sense. Check. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I, I was so devastated that I couldn't run. And, and I didn't know what the limits were. You know, five years. There, there were no boundaries. My, my, in, I, and my teacher said, but you can do a lot more without that one position. You need to figure out everything that you can do to make government better without that one position. And that's been like my driving force in regards to, and that sort of also is what drives me when I was in higher education. You know, my job was to always excel, was to always make it better. 
and move it forward and move it. And so that's the passion. But because of government specifically, um, and maybe, you know, because I can't be president of the United States because I wasn't US born, it, it'll forever eat at me to do whatever I need to. So if, oh, does that I, sort I, of no, give I, you a little light? No, that, that's, uh, yeah, I, I t again, to me, it's, it's just to listen to your stories um, and you still have the passion. It's yeah, and and it's a life. You, you know, everybody comes with their suitcases, and I've learned how to just put my suitcases in a nice corner, and mm -hmm. know that you know every day that suitcase is going to be there. I could either lug it around or I could just leave it in the corner. Yeah, very good. And I choose to leave it in the corner. Yeah, thank you, Angie. Yeah. Okay, this is the part of the program where you get to throw questions at us and we get to go, oh, I'm not really sure. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any questions for us? Well, I guess the biggest is in regards to what are your expectations if I am the successful candidate? Um, you know, what do you have, what are your expectations of me? I'll take the first crack. I'll, um, I'll, I'll, I'll add a layer once you're done. Okay. <laughs> I, we're we're very lucky that that we have a very um, active community. Um, in in particular, we have a, a new uh, we have a pathways committee that had uh, a dream three four years ago to to put in a, a, a ADA accessible walkway along the river. Um, and they and through the community compact mm -hmm. and grants, mm -hmm. our, grants um, yeah. our, t our previous town administrator with the with the pathways committee were able to uh, put that into a uh, reality and we're still moving forward on different parts of the park but now we have a uh, a scenic overlook at the at the river and we get um, on a regular occurrence, we get correspondence, either telephone calls, emails, um, conversations on the street corner from families that have people that are challenged, physically challenged, that now are able to take their grandson down or granddaughter down to the to the river and, and view the river. Um, but we have a lot of things like that, um, that we have groups. So we, we're looking for a town administrator um, that is engaging to to our committees um we don't have a lot of staff um so our 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 <laughs> town administrator is nope. is is very engaged with a day-to-day -day operation um you know when you're when you're a small community you do have turnover of staff we're fortunate we've had a town clerk for a number of years we've had cindy's been here for what three or four years um <laughs> three or four terms <laughs> we, <laughs> oh, 16. Oh, 16. Yeah. <laughs> so so we do have turnover but we do have staff um that that um has been here for a while um but they need help so so our town administrator is, is a problem solver and, and how do we get people the necessary help that they need um and at the same time, you know about the mailbox? You, you've been a selectman because we, we hear those. Right. We hear those concerns. Yep. And, and we always... It happened to me. <laughs> we, we want, we so, want, our, we want um, our residents to know um, that we hear what they're saying. Um, sometimes there's things that we can do to fix it. Sometimes, um, and they may, and, and, and you know you can't fix everything, but, you said earlier you want people to know um, that you're hearing what they're said. So you have to be able to convey that. We've been very fortunate that we've, over the last 20 years, we've had very um, good town administrators. All with, interesting, but all have different skill sets. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. Um, we, we've had, and, you know, we had one manager uh, that, that uh, the, a gentleman, he had been in municipal government forever, um, and he was an assessor in his town forever, and, and he knew we had um, 
I think all the town administrators are one shared trait with empathy for yep. for for staff yep. and residents, um, and that sometimes is is a two two edged thing. Um, but they all been so we're looking for someone that um, we proceduralize a lot of our stuff. So. If you want to know how to do a poll hearing, we get a procedure for it. You want to know how to do a liquor license, and we and I think we did that to make our town administrator's life easier. So, so not having to worry about that that stuff can can worry about looking for grants, looking to to work with the the different committees, um, and being engaged with the communities. You know, um, just just standing over at the corner store some days and, and meeting the people that come in and, and to become known or, or down at the, um, the the other market in town or the breakfast place just so people get to know you um, and know that you're available like hopefully that we are also and and and, and again rep the town administrator um, has to be um, the chief cook and bottle washer in our community so we're starting a budget process, okay? So we take a, um, our board takes a very active role in the, in the budget process, and it's led through the, t the, the town administrator. Um, and, and the town administrator needs to work with our finance committee, you know, and, and, and the board of selectmen. Um, and we also have regional responsibilities with our um, South County EMS. So we have we get an assessment from them. We get an assessment from the FERCOG, um, and we get an assessment from Frontier. We have a, a, a Union 38 for our schools. So we want so there, we do get a lot of assessments, mm -hmm. um, but we want our town administrator to be engaged with those groups so that we can understand why we're seeing the assessments. Um, and and we just. You know, we don't micromanage, um, but I think we're a very uh, engaged board um, th with our experiences. So um, we all serve on many different committees, um, and then our town administrator will help in that also. Davey? Yeah, and I think that's what leads into what I was going to say, and also it ties into something that you said. I think, talking about like procedures and things, I think one of the things that we're more interested in is governing rather than, we didn't get into this for politics, and this is not a place you come to for that. I mean, because it, this is really where, you know, and things don't always get done as fast as people would like or as we would like, but sometimes that's that's a good thing because, you know, it takes a while to get consensus on things, especially when it's a community uh, project. But I think we're more concerned with trying to improve things and have a stable environment. And uh, we talk about like, procedures and point. things like that. You know, it's because at least we want to know when we leave here that we've made things better. There's better processes in place. People don't have to reinvent things, and they can focus on bigger goals each time and and you know it <clears throat> it may not seem like huge things but just you know over the years all the procedures and things we put into place i mean that's really made a big difference in trying to make things run more efficiently and everything and um i've worked for huge corporations with hundreds of thousands of people in them and you know i, I always hear those conversations how our government ought to be run like a company and everything and you know i'll tell you I wouldn't want to see the government run like some of the com companies that I've worked for. Because let me tell you, it's not all, private sector is not always uh, what it's cracked up to be, you know. But I think, I think it's really important because I think we, we are here because, you know, we all, for, very, for our own personal reasons, we want to try to make things better and make it better. And it, especially in, in this community, we've got a, a very varied um, community and everything. And there's a lot going on. And... Um, and we're kind of a unique community. We're close to the university, but we're also a bedroom community. We don't have a lot of industry. And you'll find that we work a lot with other communities because you, you basically have to. You really have to work and 
cooperate and everything. And like Tom said, the um, the county EMS, we ended up creating an EMS service rather than our own individual volunteer services. And there was there was some resistance to that and everything, but we just stuck with focusing on what the service was there to provide and everything. And now you look at like our response times are what half of what they were, at well, least, or even less. We're down. So yeah. We're down to seven minutes, well, six minutes and 57 <coughs> seconds. From like, what was it, 18 or something? Oh, we were like away, yeah, 18, yeah. 20 minutes. <coughs> and, you know, we just focused on what the goal of that service was and just kept to that. And so I think, uh, yes, you know, somebody to help us keep governing rather than politicking. You know, there's enough of that going on out there, you know, so. My list is easy. The town administrator's primary expectation by this board member is to keep us out of jail. <laughs> yeah. And there's that, that. town court. That in town court. We don't yeah. want to yeah. 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 that in town court. court. They keep us pretty, out of jail. Pretty, That's pretty easy. Yep. So, uh, she, so she's so writing it down. She's like, board, wait, keep out, out, of out, of out of jail. Yeah, I'm like, keep <coughs> out of jail. Like, could you elaborate? <laughs> Hopefully, we're smart enough to not get ourselves in that position. Yeah, yeah. Either, it's like, you know, is there one of the situations that you got that close? No, not even close. Actually, the best part about being a in, the, in the, one of the best parts about being in this community is the bench strength that the community itself brings. We have amazing volunteers. Yep, so a lot of volunteer so, activity here. Good bench strength. That said, within the confines of the job description, which has been developed over a variety of different um, town administrators, of course, municipal budgeting, dynamic committee involvement, uh, and little things on the horizon for us, I would say, acting as a bridge and or a conduit, uh, being able to have the ability to work or to muscle our neighbors around, which is a good thing. Sometimes they need muscling, sometimes yeah. they need to be worked with. We have a 10 to 30 year capital plan that's developed, buildings are assessed, that needs execution. Open space rec plan is developed, submitted and completed. That's how we got our park grant for the Riverwalk. We have a senior housing development over there that's been over a decade in the making, almost two decades in the making, We're almost ready to go in the ground. Housing production plan is approved by DHCD. It's been recertified a second time. That's got to be administered. And our master plan review is partially complete, particularly with open space and housing in place. We're doing MVP right now, and that's just the beginning. There's a lot of other acronyms in there. So those, those of you walking in, it's going to be, I think, uh, whoever walks in, it's going to be um, not daunting, busy, but organized. Yeah, I think yeah, we kind of yeah. got our ducks in a row. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that was quick rattling. Well, which sort of leads me to this, my second question. What would be if you could pick like three priorities, um, you know, in my first 30, 90 days, you know, what would one? it be? Hmm? I'll take the first one. Go shoot it. Man. I would say take uh, the first 30 days would be to review the what we call, what we affectionately refer to as a year in the board. We have a calendar that's downstairs to make sure we stay on date, that we don't miss things like Schedule A filings or, you know, uh, God forbid the, the, the warrant doesn't open on time or whatever. So we've got you know, a, year, a year in the life, stolen straight from the Beatles, a year in the life <laughs> calendar downstairs. And I was like, is it right? Calendars move, priorities move, policies move. Is it correct? I'd say that would be the, one of the first orders of business. The second would be uh, in whoever it is it ends up being in January. It's dead in the middle of the budget season. Yep. So requests, requests are in place. Meetings are already going to be scheduled and we'll be walking straight into it. That includes forecasting the revenues. And then I'll stop. But just because of the timeline. But I think that year in the life calendar, we, we lived by it for a number of years. And it's dynamic. So we want to make sure it's adjusted accordingly. And if it doesn't need to be adjusted, it needs to be dusted off and gone, uh-huh, we did, you know. So anyway. In... in Unfortunately or fortunately, coming in, coming in, in the end of December, early January, with the way the way the town meeting our town meetings fall, you're gonna it's right in the butt. I mean, because our you know our annual elections the last the last Saturday of oh that's right the first Saturday of May and our town meetings the last Friday of April by bylaw by bylaw. So we're we're right into that. Um, so so the town administrator would have to come in um, 
and and we've already sent out our letter to all our departments, department heads, to uh, to inform them that we're um, that they need to be starting to put together their projections and their 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 um, budgets. So you know the town clerk is working on the, theirs, the assessors are working on theirs. Everybody's working, police, fire, they're all working on their budgets right now. And, and this is kind of a big time because a town administrator would be helping those um, departments right now. Um, so, so if there's a question, well, what's the board thinking about for salary increases? Um, you know, are, does it look like, you know, are there any big expenditures? So we don't have that person in position right now, but when that per the town administrator comes, um, to, we'll be working on the budget. Um, we we're also should start um, bringing together information about what's going to be happening on the warrants. Mm -hmm. You know, so so people will be you know talking to us about if there's there's any um, articles that they they want to be placing. So so the town the, the town administrator is going to be putting together the warrant and start doing the research. Um, behind that. So I, I would envision that, that we hire the town administrator. Um, I think the first 90 days more nuts and bolts. Right. Budgets is really nut, nuts, nuts and bolts, bolts and numbers. Yeah. 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 Um, and and then, then we follow that right away with elections and usually the first or second meeting of the, the newly elected board, we sit down um, and, and we talk about our goals for the next year. And and that's where the 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 three the three board members would would kind of like plot where they're going for that next year, and you would kind of get by that time the town administrator you would have an opportunity to talk to some people you get more of a feel, and and you could you could help help us or the board formulate where we need to be going. So I would see that I would I would see the interaction, but I think the first ninety days is more nuts and bolts budget stuff. Okay. And and you've been through, you you know that Jewel. I mean, as a you know your resume said you've been a board of, you know uh, a select board member. Um, you've been you know been the MMA and I mean all the towns are basically doing the same thing right now. Yeah. Same yeah. And, and, and and you know it's it's interesting. I think. Uh, and David, Scott, and I think myself has said it also. We look at town meeting as um, is our business meeting. That's that's when the town, the town really tells us where they want to go. Yeah. The town and and all this other the other stuff on the outside, you know, about petitions to do this and and not do that, are important. But really, for our town meeting. That's not where look. I mean, we want we want we want to be well prepared for our town meeting. If someone asks us a question about a budget, why why we're raising a budget or decreasing a budget or adding something to budget, we want to have answers for them. And and we never want to be up at the at the at the, the table and not have not being able to answer a question. Um, those are probably the most. Um, and, and our financial, the, our town administrator is kind of our financial director in a way. Um, and, and a lot of that information is like some of you can ask us, well, why is your health insurance going up 3% this year or whatever the number is? So what's the trend? And yeah. we're going to know because we're going to ask our town administrator. And those are stuff that would be needed. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's sort of the basic component pieces of it. Yeah. yeah. But the first 90 days, I think that's more that's nuts and bolts type of stuff. Okay. Nothing glamorous about it. It's, you know, it's an unpredictable, predictable. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I think one of the things that we didn't talk about, too, is education, because that's over 60% of our budget. Um, <clears throat> and that plays a huge role in the town. And typically, um, we've been trying to get our town administrator together with, like, the superintendent mm -hmm. and things to have mm -hmm. regular meetings Principal so that they... Yeah are in touch with um, where we stand financially. And it's very important at least to, to get an idea through the budget process. Because we try to be as transparent as possible in yeah, that to, whole process. To, to David's point, I think we approach it maybe a little bit differently mm -hmm. than, than other 
than other communities do. We don't necessarily wait for the bill. We make sure to pass on our actual revenue forecast to the districts so they know we get it. There's so the, we understand expenses, but they also have to understand the revenue side. And, and they also, and we just got their ED for the frontier in the mail yeah. first part of the week, right? So we, sh we, we make it a point to share that information to help um, make good decisions. So, now, have sorry, you guys yeah. considered or thought, of, and I don't know if you do it here, uh, sort of having like a budget committee where all the players that are in key roles for the budget is... We, well, we do have a finance committee. Yeah, yeah. And the, then, so go ahead. No, no, I, no, no, because the finance, yeah, the finance committee's, you know, role is, is sort of established relative to the budget piece, but just like... In preparation, because I've done it in both Uxbridge and when I was in Blandford, um, the Board of Selectmen at that point weren't as actively involved with the budget process. It was all the Finance Committee. I mean, they didn't even have, I was their first TA in over 11 years. So, sort of putting it in, uh, you know, it, it took it, I mean, they, they might not have liked it, but they took it out of the hands of the Finance Committee and put a collective group of, you know, there was one board member, there was the TA, there was the accountant, mm -hmm. um, you know, and then everybody sit down. The, the superintendent of schools was part of that process so that the information is shared in the collective whenever, even at town meeting, you know, and uh, you, I don't know that it'll happen here, but if somebody gets up and says, I want to move, you know, whatever out of stabilization to pay for the teacher that wasn't able to be because of whatever, you don't have to explain it. The superintendent being part of the process says, thank you, but this is the decision we made. This is how we came to it. This is what, you know, so that way it doesn't we actually anybody. do that, not through a specific committee. I think because here you'll find that while the finance committee is involved in the budget, it, it's not a town where we just hand it off by any stretch to the finance committee. We're involved as much, if not more. So if I could, there's a composite yeah. group that includes the accountant, treasurer collector, town administrator, a member of the board, and we work on the revenue and the debt, and member of the finance committee. So the revenue and the debt schedule, kind of to those two kind of columns, the budget straddles. And that group uh, facilitates the final forecast as well as the communication out to people who are developing expenses. So the TA, the town administrator, ends up being the conduit and the bridge, I use that term twice now, conduit and the bridge between that working group and the de budget department heads as well as the school. So yeah, there is there is a, a working mechanism. It may not be as clean as what you just described, but there's a working mechanism now for two town administrators that's been going on. So in 12 we, years. We work yeah. very closely. The Finance Committee and the Board of Selectmen hold joint uh, meetings. So we work, work together. So we bring the department heads in mm -hmm. uh, to discuss the budget. So we're all hearing the same information. Um, Finance committee will get the revenue forecast real time. Um, so, so I mean, we're we work together. I mean, both work separately as well, but we both our our meetings are our joint joint meeting between the boards, um, so that we're hearing all the same information at the at at the same time. Right. Of course, we're always um, open to new ideas too. If somebody's well, got some new improvement exactly. things, yep. by all yeah. means, you know. And, and um, <clears throat> as far as, you know, it, it works, it, it works for us. Um, mm -hmm. ha, ha, it, and I, 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 I think having the information shared like that, it, 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 allows, it allows everybody to hear the same, the same thing. Mm -hmm. and, and we're able to question, you know, we're able to question and you hear the questions and, and sometimes finance committee has questions that I wouldn't think about because my position is different than theirs. So it's interesting to hear their perspective at the same time without, and, and it saves time because now our, our department heads are coming to one meeting right. instead of two separate meetings. 
um, and, I, and, and things may change, and so we, the two communities get different information, but we're, we're hearing the same thing at the same time. So it's, it works for us. You get one more, then we're going to call it tonight. <laughs> you could be a tree or a, no. <laughs> Shag Park Hickory. <laughs> well, nice my choice. other question I think you guys had addressed earlier was... Easy, I knew that one. Of, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The type of supervision, but I think Tom had alluded to sort of, you know, um, not micromanaging and, you know, aided. Um, you know, actually, we use the, the town administrator is our conduit. Um, I've heard that <laughs> word before. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 but let's, let's say something, yeah, let's say, and, and this it may be different than, than and I know it's different in some town, but let, something's going on. The, uh, we have a tornado in town. Um, we want our department heads, fire chief, police chief, highway superintendent, to call the town administrator. Right. And then the town administrator gather that information and then call us, right. not, not the department head, but we want the town administrator to call us so that A, they're busy, right. we're, we're probably all, the three of us are gonna have the same question, so he shouldn't have to be, that person shouldn't be answering it three or four different times. So we want, we want the person, we, we want our department heads to talk to our town administrator and then the town administrator to inform us right. of, of what's occurring. We all, always respect one another but we do have a chair and in the chair um we we any one of us can put whatever we want on the agenda um angie please put uh, blah 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 on the agenda for for our next meeting mm -hmm. and and angie would put it on because that's fine sometimes only the chair can put right. stuff on the agenda we don't work that way um the the chair um, if, if you have a question, we would typically expect the, the TA would talk to the chair. He's looking at me because I'm the chair this yeah, year. Yeah. We've, all, we've all been the chair. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but, you, but, but you, the, the TA would, would, would talk to the chair. Um, and if there's information, then the t that, that, the informa that in, in the information needs to be conveyed, we'd expect the TA to call each of us. And, and, and to keep the dialogue, but you know, daily, weekly, whatever, would talk to and, and review the agenda with the chair to make sure the stuff was on there. Um, but if there was important stuff, the TA would call, would call us. Mm -hmm. um, when we first got on the board um, many years ago, um, the chair by decree would sign everything. Mm -hmm we don't we don't work that way we we all want to uh, affix our signatures so that we stay abreast of what's happening okay. but it's not because uh, we don't trust one another but we think it's part of our job so while some some things require just as the right. the uh, signature of the the chair usually all that information is in our, our pile of correspondence so that we get we, we all review it so we understand what's what's going on so there, there is some direct supervision, um, but but we also, like I said before, we don't micromanage. No. Um, expect we expect the town, we expect the town administrator. No one's no one's looking at the town administrator's time card. Um, I work more than five. I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lifestyle. Yeah. But, but we don't we don't look at we don't look at a time card. Um, but and, and, and it's just that the town administrator would you know or, or some keep a log or stuff that that if you want you just you know we could pop in some night and just read the log of what's of, of interest you know things that are, you are doing that you want us to know about so we can say abreast of what you're doing also and maybe help you or 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 let you know what we know about the subject mm -hmm. so well, I, 
Yeah, covered it. I think one of the best one of the best policies that we have is uh, any of the information that comes into the office is equally disseminated amongst the board. Yeah, there's no there's no individual channels. It comes in. It says board of selectmen. It doesn't matter who it is. Board of selectmen get goes it. up. We get a lot of emails. We get a lot of emails. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> it's actually been quiet earlier. Yes, it has been. Uh, I've been going up today and kind of over the top of the week, so. It's okay, yeah. but I, I would say that's. I mean, we, it. I mean. Everybody has an ego, but we we try to check it when we walk in the front door. Plus, we're old enough to know better. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, Scotty. Okay, anything else, members? I'm all set. If not, we've got one other action item, and if you don't have any questions, we'll close the interview out. Thank you for coming in, and, and uh, the conversation was delightful. We really do yeah, appreciate it. Was it was nice meeting all of you. So we have Thank another set of interviews, first one interviews next week. Again, that's Monday and Tuesday. It's part of that process. We'll deliberate one day after that, one day, not the next day, but a day after those, and then look for a second interview, uh, another conversation, different questions. <laughs> Already have our homework. And then, um, again, our goal is to fill the position uh, mid-December at the latest January. Okay. Great. Great. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thanks. It's a pleasure meeting you. Very pleasure. nice to meet you. Nice meeting you. Too. Thanks for your time. Um, thank you. Thank you. Safe drive. Thank you. Thanks so much. Okay. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice guy. What do you want to do? Yeah, yeah. I got you. I know. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> Appreciate that. So we get the, a motion that's to sign contract associated with assessors software and migration. And this one here is an extension of a uh, grant. And this has to do with server. It's a licensing issue. Licensing. Right. Got it. So it's a licensing renewal and upgrade to the to the next level that they need in order to be integrated with the new service. So all of this has to do with it's our the same any thing, but a new license level. Yeah, because they require a new version of SQL Server. Now. Yeah, and they're at 2008, I believe it is, and they have to go to SQL yeah. Server 2017. Yeah, because they're going to lose support for the old right. one. The value was? Um, the total value is 2770 27700 no. Not $2,700. <laughs> 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 and this has also been reviewed by Teresa yep. with Patriots. Okay. And um, the... IT. So they've all been working together to try to get everything that we need. And as far as we know, like I said before, the, um, the data yeah. we're being told will be migrated for no additional cost. Okay. So, okay. And who's it with again? This and is with Northeast what? IT. Oh, it is with yes. Northeast. Okay, it's not. Yeah, so they're going to be doing uh, the, the SQL Server license. So less money. We should have much. backups, obviously, too. So if something right. happens exactly. and somebody spills coffee on it during the migration process, so much less fun than fire. So I think that's, you know they're working with Patriots <laughs> on all of that. So yeah. Okay. Uh, is there a motion to accept? Uh, motion. Second. Motion is made and seconded. This is to go with uh, NEIT, and this is to help with the integration and upgrade of the assessors' data onto the servers. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three to zero, please. Okay, we have our next meeting is the 18th Monday. That's going to be at 6:30. We have a, we have business to do, but also another interview. And then again, when we meet next it's Monday. Monday. What day of the week is it? Today's Wednesday, yeah. right? 18th. Monday the 18th. That holiday. Okay. So Monday Tuesday and Tuesday. Yes. Okay, Monday and Tuesday. And Tuesday we have two interviews. Okay. Are there comments from the board? No. No. If not, is there a motion to adjourn? Uh, motion. Second. Motion is made and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor? I'd like to.